Today on Scorch Your Toys at AnyMoon.com, I'll be comparing Bandai's Revival DX VF 171 EX Alto toy, which hit shelves in January 2024 for 28,000 yen, with the original release, which debuted back in June 2012. That's a long time ago. Bandai originally released four toys in this series, starting with Alto's 171EX, before moving on to a Nightmare Plus toy that has some tweaks, like a unique head and cockpit. Luca's RVF, which has a host of additional electronic warfare parts. And the most comparable release, Maruyama's Custom Armored VF-171EX gift set. As you can see, it's been nearly nine years since the most recent release, and the price has kept crept up 8,500 yen from the last armored release and 14,000 yen from the original standalone toy. This revival comes in a slightly larger box, which may throw off the game of Tetris you're playing in your closet. Other than that slight size change, the box fits right in with the art from previous releases. Both boxes have no frills, no flip top lids, no windows, just to flap you open on the side and then you kind of shimmy out the goods within. Banda has ditched styrofoam for plastic, but the contents are the same with the toys tray, including the gun, three pairs of fixed posed hands, a pilot figure, two hand covers for fighter mode, and two hard plastic replacement head lasers. A second tray includes the basic display stand, which consists of a base, an arm, and display stand adapters for each mode. A separate baggie also includes full color instructions. The Revival Mode toy adds another tray, which includes two long range missiles, two clusters of three mid range missiles, two rocket pods, and the full set of armor parts. Now I'm gonna have a separate video I'm gonna do that is gonna be strictly armor parts, so stay tuned for that. In this video, we are just talking about the VF-171 toys. So what is a revival mode toy? Why is it different from the original release? It's not just a reissue, clearly. Well, the answer to that comes down mostly to hue, also to finish. The Revival version here, and it's going to be hard to tell, but you'll notice as I move these toys around, has a matte finish to it. The original release is a more glossy plastic. That continues throughout the pilot figures we see here. Um, a little bit less shiny. I don't, I don't really know. It's a little duller for the original release. Now has a bright white matte finish on this version. Not a big difference. The cockpits are the same except for the hue. This is a dark gray hue throughout. This is sort of a shinier black hue throughout. There's no painted on detail that's new on the inside, but there are some painted on details that are new. If we lift this toy up and look at the wing, you'll notice there are no, no step markings around here. On this toy, there are no step markings. Uh, the interesting thing here is that Bandai had already, on previous releases, given us even more markings. So this is an old Luca toy. The Luca toy has these weird brackets on the chest, has these circles behind the head, and it even has the no step on the bottom of the wings but we don't have that here. So the Revival version, while having more markings than the original release, doesn't have as many markings as were on every 171 release following or beginning with the Nightmare Plus toy. Flipping the toy over, really the most dramatic difference here are the wings. So you could see on the original release, 
we do not have hard points on the wings. But on the Revival version, we do. The original release didn't come with any weapons that would fit on those hard points. The Revival version does. That's part of the armored parts set that I'll be talking about separately. The wonderful thing about this is it removes the need on this toy, if you did want to use hard point wings, to pop out these pegs. One of them I have pops out super freely. I can't even have it on the toy anymore. To switch with the hard point wings. And even if you were never going to do that, this system of pegs can be loose. It can be overly tight. It can be weird. It can break on you when you change the wings for transformation. It was an absolute nightmare and one of the things I hated the most about the 171 toy. So now we have pegs that are permanently attached. So these wings function as if it was always meant to have these wings. And that is the hugest positive of the Revival version. The few differences continue to the guns. Here we have the original release gun. Here is the Revival version gun. They've upped the saturation of the gray purple and they've painted the accents to have a bit more contrast. So the gun looks a tiny bit better on the Revival version, but mechanically and mold wise, still the exact same thing. It does have this peg in the back that either flips out or stays in. Ultimately, you didn't need it. If you flip the toy over, the front peg is totally sufficient on either one of these toys to hold that gun in place. But if you wanted to, you could flip this out, pull those legs apart and it attaches even firmer. Now, a couple little things that I was hoping would be addressed in this revival version that really weren't. The wings have a bit of a warp to them. They don't look perfectly flat. This one kind of looks like it curves up at the end. So that you would hope would be addressed. Uh, I still don't feel like they're totally flat on the revival version but you only notice that when you're doing these perfectly dead on shots. Now, the other thing, and this is kind of a nit, the landing gear doors, especially these front ones, um, they just, there's something flimsy about them and they don't feel like they line up perfectly all the time. So I don't know, just very minor nits. Handling wise, the toy is still very solid, always was very solid in fighter mode, still very solid with the revival version. So fun to whoosh around, no problems there for either toy. The display stand included is very basic. It's not an SMS base because this is a nun's vehicle. It only elevates your toy and holds it in position well. There are no pivot points or angle points anywhere on this display stand. So it's just getting that toy up. The only difference between the original release and the revival version is the arm underneath here. So this arm right here, which I'm not sure you'll be able to see it terribly well, but it is reinforced on the revival version. It has thick grooves running all across it. It's much thinner on the version over here. You could probably see on the base here, that is a much thicker part. And all that really does is as you handle the toy, this toy is more prone to wobbling than this toy. So a little bit improvement, but still a very basic display stand. You might be looking at these toys and seeing that curved laser over here and not a curved laser over here and thinking that's something that's been fixed. From what I've read about other people complaining about this newer release, there are still plenty of versions with a curved head laser, so don't convince yourself it's fixed. One of the things that I was never a fan of on this toy and has not been rectified is the weird twist lock that Bandai implemented. This piece here moves and when it's in one position you can twist the lower leg and when it's in a different position you can't. And on the Nightmare Plus toys, it led to a lot of toys breaking for some reason. It's just an overcomplicated mechanism and you would hope that they would have just used something like every other transformable fighter plane, but they didn't do it. The strength of this toy comes, like so many other Bandai DX toys, really heavy feet. A lot of metal in the feet here. You could see the metal construction there. 
It has a great range of motion, forward, back, left, right, and twist. And all of that comes together to create a very stable platform for some amazing poses. On this toy, still overly complicated knee, nothing different there. Still great stability throughout posing. And the joints are a little stiffer and clickier right out of the box. Now that just might be from years of use. One thing I'll say, when I got this toy, transforming it was an utter nightmare because the tolerances were so tight. It always felt like I had to push the toy so hard I was gonna break something. Out of the box, the tolerance is on the Revival version, much better. I blew through my first transformation without anything freezing up on me. So big kudos there. Excellent handling toy, but really no improvements here to speak of. If you're watching this thinking, hey, how do you get the Batroid mode? I do have separate transformation guides in both directions that you can check out. Here is the original release. Here is the renewal version. And you can see a little more shine over here from that glossy finish, matte over here. But the other thing you could see are that there are really no changes. The toy is exactly the same. I have not been able to find any instances of improvements other than that wing that is permanently affixed. Now, I say that that's the only improvement, but that is such a huge improvement. It can't be understated. It's not just an improvement in fighter mode. Through transformation, I have had to put both of these wings on several times. Now, Bandai did get better about that with the Luka and Maruyama and the Nightmare Plus releases. All of those, the pegs are a little bit better. But now that they're permanently affixed, that huge issue is finally resolved. But there are some issues uh, that I'm not sure they really are, or maybe it's just so much handling. Like on this toy, there's some swing on the legs that I've never really liked. It can handle Batroid, it can get in all the poses. It just doesn't feel as solid as many of the other toys. The neck kind of floats around on you, but it stays there. The back does a good job of attaching to that spine. Transformation is definitely not intuitive. It's very complicated, especially when one considers that Yamato had a VF-17 toy that was seemingly a lot simpler. Now on this toy, sorry about the gun there, the legs, not as swingy. Still a little bit of movement there. They don't really walk into position. Uh, when you handle the toy, it's so common to put your thumb here and pop up that piece there or that piece there. So little handling things to watch out for. But otherwise, it is a solid Batroid mode and there is a ton of articulation that makes it a fun display piece. Lots of articulation, prove it. Okay, I will. The head is a ball joint, so you can cock either way. Lasers move either direction. Twists all the way around if you wanted to. Looks down, looks up, plenty of movement there. Shoulders, also a ball joint, as you can see right there. And you can see metal, metal, metal throughout. So a lot of metal in that joint. So that's good. I've never had a problem like I've had on my VF25 toys with the shoulders going totally limp on these VF-171s. There is a twist joint right underneath the shoulder and the ability to pivot all the way out. There is a double jointed elbow. Uh, don't worry about that when that happens. In fact, it's kind of nice because it shows you the pivot point underneath and then the double jointed elbow there and you have your fist. Your wrist is actually a peg that rotates around, but it is a wrist, so it comes back and forth. Thumb, trigger finger, bottom three fingers all attached to each other. And then as we move down, there's no waist on a toy like this. Their swing bar, which I showed you earlier, kind of has a pivot to it that I don't like. There's no real locking into position here. Then you get down, you have the ability for a nice wide stance and then you have the ability to come in and you have the ability to twist right here. You also have kind of a weird extension that happens right here with a gear walk joint. And then you come down, you've got your knee, 
twist at the knee as well as that twist below the knee. Is that gonna be out to twist below the knee? That's such a weird, I don't know. It, there's a twist there and a weird lock. It's stupid. Metal feet that I've already showed you in gear walk go a long way. And then this just pops back on to that little nub right there. One last hue change to point out. The head lenses on the Revival version are yellow. They are more green on the original release. Now, the big question here, uh, the changes, the matte finish, really the joints all feel like they are now proper tolerances. When this first toy came out, it was awful from a tolerance perspective, very difficult to transform, fought you at every step. Now the joints have the right ability to move when you apply pressure, so that's good. Uh, but at the core of it is that same toy that wasn't great, right? Getting rid of the wing problems, again, a huge advantage. But when I originally reviewed this toy and its variants that followed, I said, look, in the Macross Frontier era, we had the Bandai DX VF19 Advance, which I would say was the best of that era. Then I would say the YF29, I really enjoy that toy. It's like a VF25, but with some additional uh, parts that make it more fun. So that's my second place. The VF25 is my third. The YF30 is unique. It became the VF31, which is an amazing toy. And then we have the VF27, which was so-so. Uh, and finally, the VF171. And you know, even with the wings now being permanently attached, this toy still would be firmly on the bottom of my Macross Frontier list. Now the armor parts do add some fun to it. And again, I'm gonna have a follow-up review where I add those on there. It makes for a very beefy looking display piece. But overall, uh, you know, if you're a huge fan of the design, obviously get it, you're gonna love it. If you're just looking for the best toy for your money, there are better options out there. Check out the full article on anymoon.com. And as always, everybody, thanks for watching. If you are enjoying the channel, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.